Minute 25, they do have two timeouts remaining. We have all three. Morris looking deep, right side, it's intercepted! What a play! All right, guys, we are back in week two here. And just a quick recap, I did find a few more players to round out the targets list. I sort of just scrapped a lot of the players that I was already losing out on, and I just don't have the points to try and catch back up with the teams that are pushing on them before we get more points available to us. We have been struggling this year with scouting points because we got dropped to 350. And there are a few gems that we already found, of course, that I am trying to push really, really hard to get. And those few guys are Barry Burns, uh, Jason Wells, and I believe there is a couple more. Yes, Jeremy Sills, Brian Doyle, um, yeah, there's a, a good chunk of guys on the defensive side of the ball and on the offensive line that I am really trying to get because that is, I feel like, our weakest point right now for the future is the big uglies and the second like the second and third level of the defenses. So I'm going hard on them. Hopefully get a couple of these guys in. If we can at least land these guys, I'll feel much better about having to go down to two and one stars for the remainder of the class. But these guys are the, the bread and butter right now of the recruiting class for our second season. And of course, we are going on the road this week to take on Maryland. Um, we're going to start off with this game and then we're going to go straight into some more recruiting. But let's take a look at our schedule here. So, of course, we had the Louisville game that came down to the wire, but we could not get it to work. We got Maryland coming up. Then we have a bye week, Mississippi State, San Diego State, Kent State, Buffalo, Eastern Michigan, Ohio, Western Michigan, Bowling Green, another bye, Miami University, and then we finish the season with Toledo. So we might do a, a little bit of simming, but if we do, it's going to be towards the beginning part of the season because I, I do want to get some recruiting in. I want to make sure we're getting far enough along in these college dynasties, and I also want to make sure we're seeing a good chunk of the, the the conference matchups because we didn't I didn't do a good job of that last last season I'll, I'll admit that for sure so this this season definitely going to try and hit more of the Mac games because those are really where right now where we have to focus our competitiveness one thing as well that we were able to do in this might be something that you guys are aware of now but you can now change the numbers on online dynasties I wasn't able to after the initial patch because they made it available for offline for some weird reason, but not online. But they came back and they made it right. And now online dynasties, I can change the numbers. So I was able to change some guys around. Like I put Mike Hurt to 20. Um, I made Williams 32 and Raymer 29. Um, I fixed a couple of the receivers that are wearing 30s and stuff. I can't stand that. I'm sorry if you guys are all cool with that because it's college. I don't, I don't like it. I can't stand it. So I just I, I changed a few guys around that I could. And yeah, but I, I just want to let you guys know that because that was one thing that was sort of bothering me. I was like, I don't want to have ever have to play with a quarterback that's wearing number 30, you know, or something weird like that. I, I want some type of continuity in the numbers. And I, I was really nervous about it because I was like, this isn't going to I'm going to be mad for the games if that ends up happening at some point. But luckily they added it in the game for the non NIL players. And now we are good to go. So and now as for our opponent this week, Maryland Terrapins. We got MJ Morris, the redshirt junior as the starting quarterback. The junior Roman Hemby is the starter there. Going over to the receivers, they have Octavian Smith Jr., Makai White, and redshirt freshman Josiah McLaurin, as along with Shalik Knott. So those are their top four receivers. Tight end, Preston Howard is their starter, followed by Dylan Wade. They have a pretty average line, nothing too amazingly crazy, but they, they do have some quality players like Andre Roy, um, Kyle Long, and then, of course, a Louis Ba. I know I said that wrong, and I'm sorry. On defense, Daniel Owens and Jake Jackson, and on the other side, it's Neo Avery. In the middle, Jordan Phillips, Keelan Wy Kellen Wyatt, Caleb Wheatland, Anthony Reddick, and then in the secondary, Jalen Husky and Jonathan Atkins are their starters. They also have Michael Mormon and Braden Lee. Free safety, I'm assuming, is Taven Nelson. They also have Brandon Jacob, along with Brandon Hillman and Perry Fisher at the strong safety position. And we're going to get a chance to kick things off on offense. We went with the all-whites this week. 
love to see the white helmet man i love that helmet i took so much time to make that thing love being able to use it here we go first and 10 to be handoff to hurts and he oh look at the shiftiness out of mike hurt and he's gonna find nine yards right out of the gate now i feel bad about using primary colors on a lot of players oh kenji lewis to the outside gets us the first down nice quick opening sequence to get us our first first down instill some confidence in this offense and jalen macon thomas in motion he takes the end around tries to get outside gets held up and is dropped for a loss of one it was avery on the stop man he got i don't know if he got hit the tight end or what as Macon under pressure, trying to get out of trouble. He will, and he's gonna get the first. Big run for Macon to keep the drive going. We're out across the 40 now. Play action. Over the middle, and a good job of the defense to get in there and break that pass up. Second down after the incompletion. Hand off to Hurt once again. He gets outside. He's got a crease, and he's got himself another first down. Two carries, 19 so far for Hurt. Quick snap, quick throw over the middle to Applegate, and he is going to get nine. Close to the first. But now, in this territory, playbook sort of wide open on this play. Let's see what we do. Going for the pass, little out route, or a little flat route, I should say. Once again, it was Applegate with the catch. And another fresh set. We are moving right now. Johnson in motion. He takes it. Cuts it up inside. He's got a block from Hurts, and he's in the open. 10-5 touchdown. Beautiful blocking. The freshman, Mike Hurt, getting out in front and letting him get loose in the secondary for the touchdown. That is how you open up on the road against a very good team in Maryland. And on comes Morrison Company for the Maryland's first drive of the day. We're able to open things up awesomely with a big touchdown. And of course, it's Jalen Johnson. He had that breakout performance last week, almost 200 yards receiving. And Morris immediately finds his target. And he is going to get a big chunk out to the 30th first down. we go hurry up here. Hand off to Hemby. And he's, oh, look at him moving through the traffic on his way for another first. So far, both offenses doing what they need to do, not letting the defense dictate too many things. Hemby on the little end around. He's got a nice little crease initially. It cuts down, but he will still get seven yards. Good run. Anybody else miss the Maryland uniforms of the past? I don't know. I feel like these are... Not that they're not a nice uniform set. They're not, like, clean or whatever, but, I mean, I feel like Maryland always, like, set the stage for, like, what could be possible with college football uniforms. And they just seem to have gone away from that. I don't know if that was by design or what, but, I mean, obviously they purposely did it, but I'm just, like, did they change, like, creative departments or did, like, nobody like it? I, I don't know. Another handoff. This time it's 25. And 25, I don't know why he cut back. I mean, I'm glad he did because I feel like they probably score a touchdown if he stays to the outside there. So we'll take it. But Maryland is moving very quickly now. And there's Hemby back in. He takes the handoff, cuts it all the way back to the other side and gets nine more. Our defense has been reeling just like Maryland. So it looks like it might be an offensive game today. Oh, a little screen. Gets the block, and he'll get the first down. Little pitch. No, it's a handoff to Hemby, and that time, though, we are ready for it. Schilling coming down, bringing him down at the line. Well, they say he got two, but we'll take it. It's better than 12, right? And Hemby again up the middle, and he gets chopped down at the three. Third and goal. If we can somehow hold him to three here, that would be incredible, but... Let's see what they got. Hemby in motion to the outside. Morris looking end zone. Easy completion. Touchdown, Maryland. And it is all tied up. So we were not able to get much done on our last drive. So we punted it away. Maryland took over, as you can see. And they're going to start with a run by Hemby. 
do the for a gain of four. Here we go, second and six. Hand off once again, and another lane opens up. Oh my gosh, Hemby is just destroying us right now. They go right back to him, and we'll shut that one down. Good tackle at the line, only a couple of yards. Seven all, Maryland. Gonna go right back to the run game and they'll get another five. Or no, that, sorry, that was only three. Third and five, come on defense. Need ourselves a stop here. Drops back and easy completion of the receiver on the crossing route, still on his feet down on the 22 yard line. Not looking too hot for our defense right now. Quick pass. Same guy, it's number eight, and he's got another first. Hemby. Wow. He cut that back, and it was just like the floodgates opened. Like, or there was like a separation, the Red Sea. Just nobody there to bring him down, and easy touchdown for Maryland. All right, now we're down by seven. Gave up 14 on answer to Maryland here. Can we bounce back on offense? Hand off to Johnson. Same play we scored on this time, though. Maryland was ready for it. Johnson did his best to try and find a lane, but there was just nothing open. Another play action. Making looking deep. Open receiver. It's Kyle Thomas. And we're going to go straight to hurry up. That was a big completion all the way to the 48. Here we go. Come on, guys, get set. We got stuff to do. Got the ball, man. That's why I didn't hurry, hurry up here. Oh, no. This bug needs to get fixed. Yep. CFB 25 needs to get that fixed. That has got to stop happening, man. That has got to stop. They, they get glitched out for some reason once in a while, and they just let the, the clock run all the way down, and they take a delay a game. That is horrible. Bacon back, looking, completed to Lewis, first down. And you just never know when it's going to happen. It just sucks. Six minutes and some change left. Hand off to Hertz. Man, they, they rallied that one quick. Loss of two. Go right back to him. Oh, tries to get outside, but Maryland did an excellent job of sealing the edge. Cutting off any type of running out lane. Third and 12 now. Put ourselves a little behind the sticks. I don't like that call on second and long. Bacon rolling out. No, he's going to run up the middle. Oh, he's got plenty of space, and he gets the first. Second time today we've seen him take off and get the first down yardage that we need. That was big. First down. Quick snap. Bacon over the middle, batted down. He was looking for Johnson on the crossing route. DB batted it away. Four and a half to go. Play action. And it's a touchdown. Sorry, my phone rang right in the middle of that. <laughs> and oh man, look who it is. It's George Salter. How did he get in the game? Oh, wait, no, that's Eric Long, the different white receiver on the team. That was one of the guys that I didn't even realize was on the team until we saw the, the changes this uh, during the um, the training results. But Eric Long getting involved, get himself a touchdown, and we're going to tie it up at 14. And a quick pass outside, and that goes for almost a first down. So the last two drives have resulted well there's been three i think drives all i'm saying is there's been a bunch of punts since the last touchdown that was scored okay that's all i'm saying and oh my god that was a beautiful throw right into the soft spot of the zone first down maryland as they are trying to add some points here before the break minute 25 they do have two timeouts remaining we have all three morris looking deep right side it's intercepted what a play who was that? It was Jacob Finley. Our new number one corner making his first big play of the season. Undercuts the route to number eight. And maybe we just have ourselves a, a shot here to, to do something crazy before halftime. 
Oh, they send in heat. Bacon finds a receiver. It's Johnson. He's out across the 20. Shoved out near the 25. They'll mark him at the 24. Let's keep it moving here. Three, three, there you go. Come on, Macon. You got to do something. Okay. He takes off. He's got room. Slide down. Call the timeout. Nice. We still got two left. We have two left. We got two big chunk plays. Have us near the 40. If we play this right, we can at least get ourselves a field goal. There's the screen to hurt. Not a lot of blocking, though. Lyman took forever and a day to get outside. Luckily, he's able to get out of bounds. Save us the timeout. Oh, they're setting heat. Make it find somebody. He does! It's Kyle Thomas! And he's taking the distance! Touchdown! Oh, man! Wow, I mean, they sent the heat. You know it's going to have to be one-on-one -on -one matchups. There's going to be somebody open, but he ends up going to Thomas, who's one-on-one -on -one downfield, and gets an absolutely beautiful play from the sophomore receiver. Man, that was that is probably the best way we could have ended that half. So our last second touchdown of the first half, now puts us sort of in the driver's seat here to kick things off in the second half. Morris takes a snap, looks over the middle, it's completed. Nice catch. Held on to it through contact, second and three. MB takes the handoff. Of course he does, and he'll get the first. That guy has been a thorn in my side this whole game. That pick was huge, though, by... Um, why can't I think of his name? Oh, god damn it. Finley. Ha! Finley. I knew I knew his name. But Jacob Finley's big interception really turned around what looked like Maryland about to drive down the field once again and got our momentum back to us a little bit. Now, we just got to try and hold on to it, but it's been tough. Maryland is a tough team. Out route. Easy completion and wide open. Man, that was rough. There was no outside contain. And it was not on the catch. He takes it all the way down inside the 15. First and 10 for the Terps. Morris again. Quick throw. And again, it's completed. McLaurin holding on through contact. Second and five. Pistol look here. Hemby takes the handoff. Going outside. One-on-one -on -one matchup. And we win it. That was a good play by the corner there to, to make that tackle in open space. Third and three. Morris looking short. And they're not going to get it. No way do they get it. Excellent play. I believe it was Gasaway on the initial coverage, pushing him back. And we will force three points. There we go. 21 to 17. And now let's see if this offense can continue what we started on the last drive. Scoring more points. That's not how we do it. You know, I want Mike Hurt to succeed so badly. But we need a better offensive line. And I'm scared that we're going to end up losing this guy or something if, if we don't find some type of continuity. And there goes Thomas again. Thomas and Johnson are such awesome playmakers, man. They're so versatile, making plays... All the time for us. I'm so happy for them. And there's Dosk in his first catch of the day. And look at Macon. 266 yards and three touchdowns. I mean, yeah, there's not been a lot of defense played this so far this year, but it's okay. And there goes Johnson. And look at Johnson in the open. Across midfield down to the 46. 21-17. Apple get in motion. And it's a handoff to Hurt. And he's not able to get much. I feel like he could have been better off with a juke there instead of trying to lower the shoulder. That's just my opinion. Throw outside Johnson. And he will get four. Make this third down a little bit easier for us. Third and three. Bacon. Outside completed to Lewis. And it's another first down. The downfall of Lewis this season has been crazy. 
He gets outperformed all offseason, loses his spot to Thomas and Johnson, and just doesn't seem to have as much separation as he had in the past as Macon just ran, like, right into the sack. Like, come on, dude. Second and 16. And we're going to do a keeper? Oh, that was, yeah, I could have told you. Oh, no. Jalen Macon is down. Oh, boy. It's Gibson time. Oh, no. I don't want it to be Gibson time. And it's going to be a Hemby. Oh, wow. What a play in the backfield. Who was that? Was that Tierney? The, the backup safety? He made a heck of a play. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. Come on, guys. Track him down. Come on. Oh, my God. As soon as I saw that safety shoot the gap instead of try to contain, I just knew there was nobody back there, man. That sucks. Thank God Jalen Macon is back. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. Get, get hurt involved. That's what I like to see. Like, hey, no offense to Gibson, but that first play, that did not uh, give me any type of confidence in, this, in the young kid yet. There's Johnson again. Dude, you just stay outside, man. You don't always have to do a cutback. You don't always have to. I like how Madden for, the, for years had, like, outside runs and quarterback runs to the outside were, like, severely like bad to the outside where it was like ruining the runs and now CFB has taken it to the exact opposite to where it's like the players look for contact instead of the open space <laughs> oh man it is it's just funny how it's like such a stark difference because I I've, how many times we see that maybe you guys do as well where they just like they cut into the traffic and that's going to end the third quarter on a nice play to Apple get to get us a fresh set of downs and we are now in the fourth, and there is the stats. 324 passing yards, but look at their rushing yards. 208? That's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. How are we supposed to get better if we keep just getting destroyed on defense and then lose the players that are good because they don't like our playing style and also can't recruit players that want a certain playing style? Like, how... How are we supposed to manage that? Play action, Macon. Oh my God, Lewis was wide open. He got smacked, but I'll take it down to the one yard line. I just talked about how Lewis has had a hard time finding separation and getting like uh, attention from Macon this season. And there he comes up big in that scenario. First and goal, he's in motion again. He's gonna take the handoff. Just stay outside. Oh my. God. God, this is oh I I would he have guaranteed a score no maybe not there we go touchdown Kyle Thomas his second of the day but if he stays outside he at least potentially had a lane I'm gonna shut up now we just scored a touch on him happy again 28 24 we got the lead back all right Maryland back out here this has been a back and forth game all day and I'm sick of that man right there just uh, no this guy's about to break a record or something 205 yards on the ground and not even 20 carries i hate this guy is this guy like the first overall pick in the draft or are we just horrible there we go finally I think it's the first time today the man has not gained 12 yards. Obviously, I'm being a little facetious there, but you, you guys understand. Third and eight. Morris, get him. Get him. There we go. It's Crowell with the sack. And we finally get our first sack of the day. And that is going to end the drive for the Terps. All right. We got a big stop once again on defense. Here we go. Making quick pass outside to Lewis. Nice open field tackle by Maryland to bring him down gonna be just a gain of two we're under the seven minute mark 
We have the lead, but can we add to it? And off. Hurts. Cuts it back to the right, and he'll only get three. Neither team has been able to really take the lead and establish the lead all day. Third down. Looking for the screen. We got it to Hurt. He's going to have the first down. There we go. First and ten. Oh, Hurts in motion. Nope. Oh, we throw it to him anyway. That was a dumb decision. I don't like that play, man. It gets called too often. That little pump fake, halfback thing there. They, they stand five yards behind the line of scrimmage. I just, I don't like it at all. And then on second and 14, we call a run? We're trying to close the game out. We're not trying to punt it. And now we need a huge play. And we don't get it. Instead, we throw it directly to the defender. You gotta be kidding me, guys. Oh, my God. That might have just thrown away the game right there. Unless this defense can make an astronomically big play. There we go. A nice start from Gasaway. He's been a pretty good uh, player for us today. He's been all over the field. I've, had, I've seen 25 around the ball quite a bit. Second and 11. Morris looking left side. Completed to number five. First down. All right. First and 10. And to go back to Hemby. And he will get four. Second and six. Quick strike over the middle. Another completion. First and goal inside the 10. Two-minute warning. Maryland looks to put one more touchdown on the board here. Hemby with the handoff right up the gut. Wow. That man has destroyed us today. All right. We find ourselves in a similar situation. Late fourth quarter, we're down. We need a drive here. Jalen Macon has been very good all day up until the last drive with that interception. I'm hoping that was an anomaly. And, oh my God. We completed the pass, but Thomas couldn't keep his footing. Third and eight. Come on, guys. Macon over the middle. He's got Lewis again. Second time now this half that Lewis has found an opening right across the middle. Underneath. Completed. It's Applegate. Get the first. He's just shy. We're going to end up calling our first time out there. Second and inches. Blitz coming. We get rid of it and Applegate drops it. No way. All right, third and inches. Okay, that time he catches it. Thank God. If he didn't. Oh, ho. I was about to get mad. First and ten. Bacon looking left. It's completed. It was Lewis once again. Gain of six. I can't believe Macon has over 400 yards today. Oh, another big completion to Thomas. Oh, he almost gets in. Oh, my God. That was huge. First and goal. We need a touchdown, guys. Come on. Snap. Make it. Don't do this. You idiot. We need you to throw the ball, man. You, you can at least, like, try to get out of the pocket and throw it away something. There we go. Get it to hurt. Okay, whatever. We got positive yards again. Third and goal. Come on, guys. Making looking over the middle. He's got him. Touchdown. Kyle Thomas with a hat trick today. Third touchdown of the day. We retake the lead with under a minute to go. I take back everything I said about you, Macon. It was in the heat of the moment. Hope you don't take it personal. Kyle Thomas, however, is taking today personal. He has been on fire. We got ourselves a lead now. It's going to be 35 to 31 as long as this goes through. Hopefully I didn't just jinx it. 
I did not. Four point lead. I had a feeling at the beginning of the game it might come down to who had the ball last, and I'm really hoping that I'm wrong right now. Morris takes a snap. He's looking deep, middle of the field. He's got a completion. And yeah, that's, that's what I'm worried about. Did we leave Maryland too much time? They still have two timeouts after just calling their first one there. And they have 40 seconds. Over the middle, completed again. And they don't really have to worry about using the outer, out, outer bounds of the field because they have the, the timeouts. And they're already across midfield. Morris takes a snap, throws it short. Oh my God. We gotta get our hands up, guys. We are gonna lose this game by just not being very aware of our surroundings on defense. Morris is just getting all day to throw. There's been no pressure. There we go. Crowell heard me. He's like, you better shut your mouth. I'm gonna get some pressure. Second and 21, clock is running. They have no timeouts. Oh no. 12 seconds, they spike it. That sack might have just saved this game. But we need this defense to make like two more plays. Morris back. Oh, sack again! That's game! There's no way they can get to the ball in time. We just, we did it! We just did it! We upset Maryland at home. 35 to 21, or 31. Jalen Macon, over 400 yards. Kyle Thomas, three receiving touchdowns. I can't believe we just pulled that off. Hamby was killing us all game. He had over 200 on the ground. It was an offensive onslaught all day long for both teams. And the defense steps up in the most critical time to get two back-to-back -back sacks and get us the victory. That might be our most impressive win of the dynasty so far. Let's take a look at these stats now. So we're going to look at, well, oh, you we can't look at, okay. Well, I guess, so let's look here. Jalen Macon, 38 of 47, 454 yards. You know what, guys? I think it's about time that I take down this, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to have to drop. Okay. I am working on CFP sliders, by the way. I am working on them, but it's, it's a lot. So I'm trying my best to, to not. It's tricky for me because I'm trying to treat it like I would in Madden, but I can't because it's college football. So it's been taking me a while. I'm, I'm trying to work through it. I'm going to work through it with you guys here with, you know, this dynasty. So right now I'm already seeing quarterback accuracy probably has to come down a little bit, right? Or maybe pass coverage has to come up even more. I do have them at 55 right now, that and play, play defense reaction or pass defense reaction. But something's not clicking. Um, the run game works against us all the time but it does not work for us. That is for sure. Mike Hurt started off with a decent day with the first couple of carries, and then it was all downhill from there. Literally two for 19. He finished the day with six more carries and only got two yards out of those six carries. That is, that's horrible. And then receiving. Thomas. I mean, just like Johnson last week, nine, 167 and three touchdowns. I mean, we had a, a really good rotation going with our receivers. Of course, we are going to when our quarterback has over 450 passing. Uh, defensively, not a lot of stuff to look at that's really um, good, except the sacks. Crowell, uh, Jay Sean Thomas, and then, of course, Kevin Session. I think Thomas was the one who had that last sack that I was just talking about, not Crowell, because I know Crowell had one earlier. So the sacks, we had three. They came when we needed them the most, and we get the big play. And then, of course, the interception from Jacob Finley, his first of the season. And those few stops are really what won us this game. Our offense, of course, kept us going, kept us in the game every step of the way. A very good effort all around, I would say, even though the defense gave up a ton of yards. All right, so now that we are done with that, we got the big win. It's time for us to advance and see where we're at with our recruiting. Okay, so Thorne initially was pulling away, but now we have shortened the gap on Northwestern by quite a bit. Um, I added a few guys as well. I'll go over them here with you guys when I see them. So Quenku is one of them. I just wanted to fill the school out. I found this guy, he was had us as number one, so I added him. I don't even have an, a, a scholarship to offer him because I don't have any gosh darn hours, but you know, it, it is what it is. Um, Sharga, we're still gaining on, or we're still you know leading on. Um, 
we are getting beat up by Iowa State with Moses Davis. I wish I had more hours to give. Um, Greg Balcason was somebody that I added, um, but wow, Iowa State went hard on him this last go around. These are guys that I also added uh, just because we need tackles and guards galore and we have been having a rough go of it going against uh, these other teams. So I just added a bunch. I added a couple of guards too. Okay, we're good on Ben Hickson now. Um, we're still good on Costello. Good there and where. We are in first still, but Iowa State, man, they need to rebuild their whole line. Can y'all leave us alone, please? Kevin Rawls is getting pursued heavily by Ball State. And then centers, I did add a couple, but more like these guys are like athletes where this guy's athlete, so I could play him at really any position, but this guy, 6'4", 300 pounds, he's, he could be a guy that could play like guard or who knows, even, even tackle. Um, so that's why I added him to the list. Defensive ends, Ball State still, you know, pulling away from us, but we're at least keeping up. Of course, uh, Dodge with the Insta commit, Brian Thomas we're still gaining on. Eli Payne was another guy that I added because there just hasn't really been anything done to him offers wise or anything. So want to see if we get in there. I gave up on the other one. Uh, Illinois was pushing way too hard. I was just like, I'm just going to cash in on him. I didn't spend any points and just left it alone. Uh, we are still good on Mike Hicks. Same with Barry Burns and Shaquem Paxson. Middle linebackers, we are still pulling on Jeremy Sills. That recruit is going to be a big get for us if we can land him. I just have a feeling. Corners, we are in first now for D'Angelo Floyd, and we are gaining, or we're, we're pulling on Iowa State. Um, not so much on Tashawn Goodley, but at least one of them we're, we're getting somewhere on. Uh, Lucian, still the same. Uh, Central Michigan's pushing a lot harder than we are because we don't even have a point on them. And then Jason Wells is the one that we are trying to get, and... It looks like, is that Kennesaw State getting in the mix now? Them punks? Okay, well, we're going to have to try that much harder. And we have points to give him, like, room for hours, but we just don't have the points. I'm almost wondering if this is a situation where I just cut my losses on Honeycut and just put it all on Wells since we, we know we have an advantage and we know he's good. And it'll give us some extra hours, too, to, to play around with. So I, I think that might be a good idea. Now, the reason I'm going to say this, okay, Louisiana Tech is showing interest, right? They didn't initially. Now they are. Without much effort, they have jumped over us, and they have a better pipeline than us. And we're out get, we're getting outgained by, is that Houston down below? So we are going to be the third team regardless. And yes, I know that we could have a lot more points on him, right? I do. But we have the lead on Wells right now. I don't want to lose it. I'd rather take that and stick the extra 15 here on Wells and hope that we can get the commit and go back to the drawing board because we don't need all of these safeties anyway. So I'm going to do that. We're going to go in here. We are going to remove his friends and family. And I will leave him on the board here. I won't take him off my board, but I'm not going to put any points on him right now. I got to put that towards Wells. And now I'm wondering, do we have a good... No, we don't really have a good one to, to, to go on. Okay. I was hoping to have a good hard sell to do. Okay. So with Jason Wells here, what we could do, instead of doing send the house, I could do a hard sell and contact friends and family with him. Because the three that we have lined up, they're not the best, but they are good enough. We have an A in there and a C minus. And for us, with our current situation with school, it's that's a really good that, that's a good role for us <laughs> I could be quite honest so I'm gonna remove this there we go it's game time so C minus D plus and an A but that A is going to carry us we'll get enough like worthy points to to make it worthwhile so we're gonna do that and that puts us 40 and then I'm gonna do contact friends and family which puts us at a full 65 that will hopefully help us pull back away from Kennesaw State and slow them down a little bit. We're close to top three. I'm really hoping this can get him here. Um, like I said, I'll leave Honeycutt here. I'm just not pushing too hard on him. And that does give us 10 points, which means we could offer some scholarships here to players 
Offensive line is very easily one of our weakest spots. So I, I feel like I should just stick these 10 points somewhere here. Um, I think I should actually go on Moses Davis because right now, I mean, I would like to get Balka soon, but we haven't really done anything with him yet. Whereas Davis, we have we have given him points and a con and a scholarship offer. And Iowa State right now is not giving as much influence. We could jump them. They do have a better pipeline than us. So it's really going to come down to if they are really serious about this or not. Or we could try to go on some of these other guys like this guy, Keenan Parmel. Maybe I do that with him. Yeah, oh, man, that's this is tough. I could add more per points on Burns or Sills. Well, Sills is already at 60, so I think we're going to leave that. But let me add these extra 10 points here to Burns. And actually, let me see. Do we have enough on him? Do we have... Let me see if we have enough here to do... B minus, a B plus, and an A. Oh, okay. Hold up. Hold up, guys. Okay, we're going to do hard sell on him. We know his three. There it is. And that for sure will be good. We have an A minus and a B plus. So we're going to do that with Burns. 40 points there. And then we're also going to add... I'd like to add a full to him. I really would. Oh, man, this sucks. I'm going to come back to this. Wait, we have 25 on him. Schools aren't really showing much interest. Okay, this is what I think we're going to do. I'm going to... This is where you have to sort of play around with things, right? Like, I have to take... I have to make good, conscious decisions for the team. Now, I want Paxson, and I want Burns. But what I do know is that Paxson is ranked 1,018th in the country, or in the nation. And Burns is ranked 489, right? And I also know that they're both three stars, and I know that Burns not only... Fits the exact tendency I'm looking for, which is pass coverage, but it's a gem. And we have a leg up on him. And we also have more competition with Burns than we do on Paxson. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to remove friends and family. I'm going to put DM the player for now. That's going to give us an extra little bit of points here. And I'm going to go back here and we're going to add 25 of those to Burns to max him out. Paxson, yeah, we're taking a loss a little bit on Paxson, but we, we need to, to sort of prioritize, right? Burns, we know, is a gem, and we know he's a really good nationally ranked player compared to some of the other guys that we have on their board. So we need to put all of our manpower in him, in my opinion. That's that's the way I see it. I don't want to touch Mike Hicks because we're, we're, we have more competition there than we do with Paxson. Um, I mean, it's the same amount of schools, but you can see that Ball State's pushing a little bit harder. And Illinois, who is a a four pipeline tier is getting in on the mix so we might not even get hicks but i want to keep it there just in case we can hold them off sills i think we're good there there's nobody even going after him um i would like to put some points on a player that we're working on but i also really like to land some of the guys that we're already sort of scout or get some scholarships on some guys here Actually, no, we're going to go Parmel. Yeah, definitely we're going to go Parmel. Okay. So there's Parmel gone. Um, and then I think we do it on pain. Yeah. Oh, wait. Maybe we do it on Rawls? Try and catch. No. I don't know if we're going to be able to catch Ball State. We don't have a pipeline on him. And Ball State does. I'll just leave it for now. But I feel like we should... Let's go after Caleb Townsell here. Let's offer him a, a scholarship. There we go. So that worked out a little bit. So we're going to see if we can jump into the Parmel race here. Get ourselves a three-star tackle. We desperately need tackles. We are gaining on Davis. So I'm going to leave it for another week and see what happens and see if we catch up even more. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of where my head goes when it's come to these points. Like I, I sort of have to outweigh the like how much of the negative is it for each individual player. And that's why I make the decision sometimes to remove points or to add them to somebody else because like, you know, I, I mean, hey, I'm not saying I'm 100% correct either. This is just my gut feeling. And sometimes with this recruiting stuff, same with drafting and Madden, you just got to go with your gut sometimes if you don't have all the information in front of you. And it makes it that much harder when you're a one star that doesn't have enough points to really actually scout players for talent 
or just load them all up with send the house. You know, we, we just don't have that luxury. So I gotta, I gotta use my gut and that's what my gut's telling me. So let's go ahead and advance through the bye week and see what happens. Oh, it looks like we might actually have some points. We do, we got 10 more points. That's awesome. Oh, Ball State is coming up hard on Sharga. Come on guys, leave us the hell alone. Oh, look at that. We are really gaining on Iowa State very quickly. We're getting the top five for sure. We might be able to get in the, in the front here. I'm hoping so. Did we get anywhere with Parmel? Okay, we did jump into the top here because of that, which makes sense, right? We're the only one who's offered him a scholarship so far. So it's been sort of a standstill now with Keaton. Ball State isn't pushing too much harder. We are sort of, our, our sliver there of influence is getting a little bit bigger. Okay, and see, this is what I was worried about. Illinois got involved with Mike Hicks super fast. They are going to destroy us, unfortunately. Um, we don't have the points, even if I wanted to allocate two Hicks right now to keep up with Illinois. Um, they are beating us in pipeline by one. They're rising up the boards fast. Everybody's beating us. So we are still good with Burns. And now Paxton is getting pushed. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to just cut our ties with Mike Hicks. I won't take him off my board just in case, you know, things open up later. But I am going to remove the friends and family and clear up those points for us. Paxton, however... We could probably add some points if he's worth a lot, but if I can find another top 1,000 player that we have on our board to add points to, I'm probably going to go that route. Kennesaw State is making another push, but our we did we were able to push out even farther now because of what we did last week with the hard sell and the contact friends and family. Um, Honeycut, yeah, we're we're getting we're getting hosed by Honeycut. We're they're down, he's down to top three. I doubt we'll be able to do anything about that. I could try and swing in to get him. You know, I, I I could, but I would need more points. I would need to almost get him to 60, and we just don't have those points right now. So now let's revisit some guys that we have on the board that we're not really, we're not winning or like we're losing right now, but we don't, like we're not out of the race. You know what I mean? Like for instance, Sharga here. I say, let's go ahead. We don't know all of his things, but I'm gonna try and see if I can do this. And we're gonna see if I can do a hard sell on him. Okay, good news, good news. I don't know his third, but this one here is the only one that lines up with his other two, which means I could do this as a hard sell for him, which I'm gonna do, which gives us 40 points on him, which is more than what we were doing before. We had 25 on him. I'm not gonna do go full bore on him though. Um, I'm gonna give it a week and see if that really helps. We added points or we added hours. I keep referring to hours as points, guys, and I'm sorry, but that's what I mean when I say points. I'm just looking at the, the number here. So we have more hours, 40 hours to him. We had 25 and we're doing a good hard sell. So I'm hoping that that gives us enough to, to not have to put more point, more hours on him, but we'll see. And that still leaves us 20. I want to add more to Moses Davis here. I think that would be the smart play. So I'm going to take this away. That gives us 30, and I'm going to do contact friends and family on him. He is a top 700 nationally ranked player. It's in a position of need for us, and that leaves us five points. And I'm just going to, you know what? I'm just going to add it to Sills here. Just max him out. Screw it. Just do ser search social media just to get it out of the way. And there we go. I'm wondering if I could do a hard sell with him, actually. Let me see. Yeah, we're going to go student of the game hard sell on Sills. And then I'm also going to do contact friends and family. So we're going to keep them maxed out, but I'm just going to do it a little bit different way because if you, if you can nail student of the game, it will give you better outcomes than, um, it's hard than send the house. If you're, if you have the right point, that's what I'm looking at. And I've told you guys this before, if for whatever reason you guys, you know, didn't see that, um, max play CFB put out a video. And, oh man. When was that? It was a while ago now. But he just broke it down and determined from his calculations that you need 19 points to make a hard or more than 19 points to make um, a hard sell worth more than a send the house. And the points are broken down just by the letter grade. So your best letter grade on your motivations can be an A plus. That's 19 points or that's 13 points because there's 13 different options. And then F is one and it just goes up or down by one, depending on where you're at. So what I do when I just say it makes sense to do it is I have a sheet here with, I just have it all you know, written down and I just add them up. And if it's more than 19, I do the hard sell instead of send the house. I save 10 points. 
or in this case, I'll still max him out. But if the hard sell is better than 19, you have a good chance of getting more influence than if you send the house on him. And that means that even though you have a maxed out at 65, it might give enough influence, almost like you're doing 70 hours or 75 hours. That's that's sort of what the idea is behind it. And just because I'm, I'm getting in, involved with the recruiting again, I, I do want to sim this week. I, like I said, I plan on watching more games, but I wanna watch more of the Mac games later on in the season. So we will watch more games, but I do wanna get a little bit more farther into this. We're only in week four. We're one and one, right? We just came off that big one with Maryland. Let's see if we can turn that into um, you know, maybe some momentum. So let's go ahead and let's advance the week and we'll see what happens after that. Oh, hey, so we got a win. We got a two, we're at two and one. That's big. Awesome. Okay, so Northwestern is about to dog walk us for Sean Thorne. Um, at that point, I don't see the need of going that hard for him. So I'm just gonna take these hours back so we can get those and use them elsewhere. And we're just gonna remove him from the board. Okay, so that did help us out quite a bit. That got us back in front for Sharga. So we, we pushed down Ball State for another week. That also put us back on top for Moses Davis, which is big. The question is, can we keep it there? Because, you know, he he does have a pipeline team, a team that's better with pipeline than us, which is Iowa State at a two compared to R1. But if we're going hard enough, we might be able to get him to come here. Oh boy. So Iowa State is now pushing super hard at Doyle. So now I'm gonna have to see if we have a, do we have one that would make sense? We do. Okay, well, here it is again. We're taking away set in the house. We're gonna go to hard sell. We know his three, it's team player. So yes, we have a D minus, but our coach stability is B plus and our proximity to home is A minus plus. That's his deal breaker, I think. So we're gonna go there. We got 10 more points we can spend. So we're gonna do DM the player on him. Okay, so we are still sort of gaining on Keaton which is crazy because we haven't really done anything with him. Uh, we do know that, you know, he's a, a decent player. I feel like with his block shedding and strength, he would be much better on the inside. So I feel like he is actually really good in that scenario. I'm going to go ahead and put DM the player on him to, for the last 10 points and see if that can get us over the top for, for Ball State because I would really like to bring him in and move him to the inside. We are really close to a Burns commit. If we can get him to commit... That would free up a lot of points for us to go on with Hicks or somebody. Um, Paxson, okay, now we're getting beat by Indiana. Uh, I, I had a feeling this would happen. I did. This was the risk I'm willing to take to get Burns here. So I think we're going to take away his points as well and just let it be. Well, maybe I'll leave it. I mean, I have to decide. I mean, do I want... I, I feel like Mike Hicks isn't as, as important as Paxson, so maybe I'll just leave that alone. And then Wells, okay, we're getting really close to the commit on Wells. So that, that all worked out pretty well for us. Oh boy, yeah, and that's that changed really quickly. So we'll just take him off the board. So now we have it all figured out. We have all of our points put elsewhere. I think this is a good spot for us to end the video. Uh, we do have San Diego State. I'm not sure if we're gonna watch that game or maybe sim it, and then we'll, we'll, we'll play a different game. Um, but we have a lot of recruiting going on, a lot of good stuff happening right now with some of the playmakers that we found earlier. Um, had a big win over Maryland, so I'm excited about that. But as for this video, guys, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Before you leave, please hit that like button, subscribe if you have not already, and turn on that bell notification, and I will see you guys next time.